Hey, what's up guys? Mike at Red Fox here. In this video, I want to show you how to get up to 58 mega hash out of your RX 5700 or 5700 XTs. Uh, before me right here, I have a Sapphire Pulse 5700 XT. And you know I'm a miner because I left the plastic on the fan. So hold up. Yeah. Alright, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to show you guys how to flash this card, overclock this card, with all the most recent up-to-date information so you can get 58 mega hash out of it at a really good wattage juice. So, what we need to do, we need to get my RTX 3060 Ti out of my test bench. We're going to get this card plugged in. And then we're going to take it step by step. So let me shut this down, switch these cards up, and we'll get going. Just one quick thing before I get that card in. You can see there's no cards installed right now. I just want to show you guys what my idle wattage is. Uh, you can see it's around 23, 24. I've seen it go up a little bit. Yep, 27. So we'll call it around 25 to 30 watts. Uh, and that's going to be important as we monitor the uh, wattage the card is using once I get it in. All right, guys, so I got the GPU installed here. You can see my idle wattage there, around 35 watts or so with the card installed. Um, so what we're going to do now, I'm going to run this card so I have no overclocks, no undervolting on this at all. Let's go ahead and open up Phoenix Miner and just see what we get uh, at a base start point right here. See how much uh, mega hash we get out of this card. So if you got this card, and just open the box, put it in a PC or a rig uh, and just started mining, what mega hash would you get if you didn't want to tinker with anything? You can see the wattage, 230 watts. So that card right now is using about 200 watts, which is uh, not great. But let's see what we get here. So there we go, 47 mega hash. You see the wattage coming through there, 50 mega hash. I'll give this a second to level out. Um, and then we'll do some overclocks with the card stock, no BIOS mods, no nothing. Um, if you didn't want to tinker with this, this with that, this will give you a good idea of what you can expect out of this card. So, uh, what do we got? 49, 50 mega hash. Fans are going, using a lot. So using what, 220 watts, 230 watts. So one thing you, you definitely need to know with AMD as compared to Nvidia, is that software reading is not accurate. You're always gonna add 20, 30, 40 watts to what that's reporting there. I see a lot of people make that mistake thinking their cards are really efficient when truth is they're just they're just not. So shares accepted. So what are we at? Like 49, 50, 51 mega hash. So that's what, that's what you can expect. It'll level off a little bit, but that's what you can expect. If you took this card out of the box and just didn't want to tinker any with anything, um, and just started mining, that's what you can expect, and that's the wattage that you can expect. Okay, let's go ahead and shut down this miner. And what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna use uh, this piece of software, I'll leave a link to it, it's called uh, AMD Radeon software, and what it's gonna allow me to do is uh, overclock this card. So I'm in the performance tuning tab, you can see there, and we're gonna do everything manual. And we're just gonna turn on all this hidden stuff here. So all the advanced controls, we may not use them all right now, but let's turn them on so we have full control. Um, so listen, I've done a lot of tinkering, a lot of research on 5700s, NXTs. I have uh, a few of them. Um, so I know really a good starting point for this card specifically. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my core frequency to 1450 and I'm gonna get my voltage to a maximum of 800 and then I know that this card likes what is it like 1860 for uh, its memory overclock I'm not gonna adjust fans right now for this video but you certainly want to look there and I haven't had to adjust power tuning at all. Let me know if you guys adjust that stuff, but I've never adjusted that with my uh, 5700s or XTs. So let's go ahead and apply that. 
And let's go ahead and start Phoenix Miner again and see what kind of difference we get. And this will give you a good idea if you know you are comfortable overclocking, um, but you don't want to go into BIOS modding your card. Maybe you're scared of you know the potential risk of bricking it um, and it becomes unusable. So maybe you don't want to go that far. You know what could you get out of this card? Uh, if you overclocked it, but didn't touch anything else. Fans are spinning. See our wattage looking pretty good there. What are we up to 175-ish? And there we go, we got 53 mega hash. You can sh see a share was just accepted. Again, that software wattage is not correct. Please don't use that for AMD cards, for Nvidia. It's pretty accurate. So 53 mega hash looking pretty good so not bad really if you just wanted if you picked up a 5700 or xt and you didn't want to bios mod it um you know you can expect to get this performance 52 53 54 mega hash out of this card using um what do we say i mean it's 175 180 watts you know so you're really looking at using i guess 135 140 watts out of this card if my math is right there please forgive me if it's not so you can see it's kind of leveling off there around 53 mega hash. So not bad. All right, so what we're gonna do now, let me shut this down, is we're gonna BIOS mod it and we're gonna edit some memory timings uh, to really get the most performance possible out of this card. And to do that, you're gonna need to download some software. So let me go ahead and get up my cheat sheet so I remember everything that we need to do. And let me load up the website you're going to want to go to. So you want to go to Igor's Lab. And I'll leave links to all of this stuff in the description down below. But here you're going to have a uh, written walkthrough on how to do uh, everything I'm going to talk about today. And you're going to have the download links for Red BIOS Editor and then the Flash Tool. Those are the two tools along with the AMD Radeon Overclock software we're going to utilize to get the absolute most performance out of that 5700 XT. All right, so let's get started here. The first thing we need to do is save the BIOS or the ROM of that card so that we can always go back to it because if something happens or you gotta send it in for an RMA or you wanna sell it or for whatever reason you wanna go back, you wanna make sure you have that file saved. So I'm not gonna go through installing Red BIOS Editor, the Flash tool, it's pretty straightforward. I'm just gonna go through how to utilize those tools. So you wanna save that Flash tool to your desktop, and this is it here. And there is a little install tool that you, you wanna run. I already did it uh, once you don't download it. The main tool we're gonna to use, though, is the AMD VB Flash. And to utilize that, we're gonna to need to open the command prompt. So I'm gonna do that, and you're gonna to wanna to run as administrator, so you have full control. And what you need to do here is navigate to the place where you saved that folder. So for me, I know I'm gonna do this all one-handed, so please forgive me. I'm gonna change directory to, oh man, this is gonna be rough. Users, ocean, it's my username, desktop, whoa. Slash AMD VB Flash. I'm I'm so bad at typing with one hand. Uh, underscore Windows. All right, and that's going to put me in that directory. So now I can run, and you can see my cheat sheet there. If you need them, I can run the command I need to save the stock BIOS of that card. So it's going to be AMD VB Flash s for save zero is the gpu so this i have only one gpu in this rig i know that its position is zero and then i'm going to call this you call it whatever you want i'm going to call it stock uh, pulse d700 xt dot rom all right cool so it's going to go ahead and save that stock bios you can see it did just that, there it is. So now I have it for safekeeping. Should something happen, I can always go back. And I also need this, because this is the BIOS that I'm gonna modify 
here in a second. So the next tool that you would have installed at this point is Red BIOS Editor. So let's go ahead and load that up. This is it, not too fancy. What we're gonna do is load, and we're gonna find on my desktop that stock BIOS that I just saved from that card. Let's go ahead and open that. We know it's a 5700 XT. And what we're gonna do is modify some VRAM timings. So the first thing to do is to take all these 1550 timings and you're going to copy and paste those on each RAM timing that follows, all right? I'm gonna see, and we're gonna do that for both memory types here. So 1500 in this case, paste that up. And almost done. Oop. All right, last one. Uh, and then what I like to do at this point is go ahead and save that new BIOS and we're gonna call that modded. 5700, oop, modded, do modded pulse. 5700 XT dot, well, it's already a dot ROM. So we're gonna call it modded pulse 5700 XT. Let's go ahead and save that. Now, what you wanna do is verify both those saved for both memory types. So we're looking good. Let's go ahead and check the other one. Because if you only do one, you're not gonna get full performance out of this car. So that's looking good. Okay, the next thing you wanna do, and this is really the most uh, recent information, is go ahead to that first memory type. We're gonna go ahead and click on, starting with 1550, and we're gonna modify this. DRAM timing 12 T ref. Now I can't give you an exact number uh, for these for each individual card. I know that this specific card, and this could be a good starting place for you, um, likes to add 3000 onto this T ref. So what I'm gonna do is start at 5,945. And I will do that for each timing here. So in this case, I'm going to add to uh, another 3000. So we get five, eight, five, zero. Okay, so that's done. So we're gonna go ahead and save that to that same modded pulse um, BIOS ROM. And that's it. Now guys, please don't ask me what all of that does. There's a lot of people way smarter than me that figured all of this stuff out and I just, I'm thankful for them uh, for releasing that to the mining community and teaching us all what to do to get the most performance out of these cards. Okay, so now we have that saved. Now what we need to do is take that modded uh, BIOS ROM that we just made and put that onto the card. And we're gonna utilize that same flash tool uh, to make this happen. So I have my cheat sheet here and we're gonna go ahead and do that. So first command is we need to unlock that ROM. So we're gonna do AMD VB flash and the command is dash unlock ROM and that same GPU position is zero. So in a second here, we'll unlock that. See ROM unlocked, great. So now we can flash it with the new modded ROM we just made. So again, AMD, BB flash, P is the command to uh, put this BIOS on there. Zero is the position of that card. And then we're gonna put the file name. So we called that modded pulse 5700 XT dot ROM. All right, so if I did everything correctly, uh, we should see that flash on the card. We got some info there. We should hopefully get something that tells us we're successful and asks us to restart. There we go. 
Restart system to complete the BIOS update. So let's go ahead and give it a restart here. Okay, and we're restarted. So uh, computer's back up. Let's go ahead before we start mining and set my preferred overclocks again. So if you remember, I want that at 1450. I don't want my voltage going over 800. Let's just go ahead and reset that. And then my memory is still good at 1860. And this is a really good starting place. This is not the end all be all, but let's go ahead and apply those changes. And let's start mining and see what kind of difference we get in performance. You can see still sitting around 40, 45. Uh, I've seen it go up to 50 watts idle with the GPU plugged in. And we'll monitor that and the hash rate we get as we start this miner. So here we go, guys. So we've taken our Sapphire Pulse 5700 XT. We've modified the BIOS, and uh, which included the memory timings. And we've overclocked the card to get the most performance possible with the least amount of wattage used. So let's see if we did everything right. It's calculating the DAG right now for Ethereum. And we'll see what kind of mega hash we get, and we'll just give it a second and let it level off. Well, there's a big difference already, right? 57.6 mega hash. Let's see what we get here. I promise you guys, 58. We'll see how close we get. Get in there. Uh, sitting around 175 watts total system. So that leaves us, what, about 130 watts or so for the card. There we go, 58.4. And you can definitely tinker with this more. This is generally exactly where I start with all of my uh, 5700s or XTs is exactly um, this memory uh, overclock, this frequency and voltage. And then what you can do is really uh, adjust your memory clock up or down depending if you're getting invalid shares or, or not. So this is not law, adjust as necessary, but it's a really good starting place. So there we are, 56.8, 57.6, there's your wattage, I really like the look of this card by the way, it's pretty cool. So let's see, 58.3, 57.6, right, you want to have some fun, let's boost this a little bit, still kind of leveling off there. Do 1880. Let's go ahead and apply it. There we hit 58. I know this card will do 58, by the way. It's exactly what it does when I have it in Hive OS um, at these clocks right there. Uh, we're in Windows here, so I think we might get a little bit lower, but I want to show you guys it's absolutely possible. There we go, 58.2 mega hash, 58.2. Again, saying 110 watts, we're using more than that. We're using about 130, 135 watts. Um, and like I said before, you can absolutely tinker with that a little bit more to lower your wattage, get your efficiency a little bit better. But look at that, guys. We are adding five, six mega hash, uh, seven mega hash even to what we were originally getting. So I hope this was helpful. I'm gonna leave links to everything in the description below and how we did this. And I really hope this is the ultimate guide for how to flash both an RX 5700 and a 5700 XT, which includes all the latest information that we have on adjusting memory timings and really good starting places for overclocks. Hope this is helpful for you. Uh, if you like this video, please hit the like button, subscribe uh, for more content on crypto mining. And uh, listen, guys, please take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and I'll see you guys in the next video.